Welcome to Esquire Group's video on why the UAE is a trust and foundation planning powerhouse. Now, I actually wrote an article on this topic for Bloomberg recently, and I, so I thought I'd do a video on it because I think it's a super interesting topic, and I think that you'll get a lot out of learning more about the UAE and what it has to offer in trust and foundation planning. But first, as always, with all my videos, a disclaimer, a little cover my own ass. This presentation is prepared for education purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. All right, let's get into it. So, as we all know, we've read in the papers that global wealth is on the rise, right? Through the pandemic, the global wealth of ultra high net worth individuals has skyrocketed. So they have a lot of wealth to protect. And this is resulting in one of the, or I think the greatest wealth transfer of all time from one generation to the next. Within the next 10 years, we're gonna see a huge transfer of wealth from one generation to the next. And on top of that, there's a war on wealth, right? I mean, governments are out to tax wealth. Governments are out to try to confiscate wealth. So wealth has gro grown, wealth needs to be transferred, and wealth is under attack. So it has become more important than ever for high net worth individuals to start implementing structures to hold and manage their worldwide wealth so they can grow it, preserve it, protect it, and pass it on to their heirs in a tax efficient manner according to their wishes. And the most typical way that this is done is by setting up a trust or foundation to act as a backbone of the high net worth individuals, a global holding structure, right? So you have this trust of foundations, the backbone, and then it owns the different holding companies with the different assets and investments. Now, typically you would set up this trust or foundation in a jurisdiction that has flexible estate planning laws, flexible succession planning laws, strong wealth protection laws, strong privacy laws, and tax benefits. So the question then always becomes, what jurisdiction is that? Where do I set up my wealth structure? Because there's a lot of jurisdictions out there and it's typically been in a lot of the island jurisdictions have been used for this purpose. But a lot of the island jurisdictions and a lot of the jurisdictions that we've typically used in the past have lost their luster. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you why. The EU, the US, the OECD, the Tax Justice Network, all these transparency advocates basically try to eradicate tax havens, right? Or, or, or financial centers, because they're not really tax havens. Um, and this new regulatory framework has made a lot of the traditional planning jurisdictions very unattractive due to registers of beneficial owners, trust registers, DAC 6, the multilateral instrument, and economic substance regulations. And I'm just going to briefly go through what those are. So registers of beneficial owners, as many of you may know, I've done a lot of videos about this, uh, are basically registers of the beneficial owners of a structure. So in terms of a foundation, that's going to be the settler, the trustee, the protector, and the beneficiaries. In terms of a foundation, it's the founder, the council, the guardian, and the beneficiaries, right? So you don't want that out in the public domain. I mean, if you're a high net worth individual, you want to conduct your financial affairs in private. So you don't want to be in a public beneficial owner register, right? Most of the traditional jurisdictions have either made their beneficial owner registers public or they've committed to making it public in the not too distant future. So why would you want to set up some place that's going to have no privacy suit? You don't. Second, trust registers. Trusts have typically been private documents between the settler and the trustee. And typically the only people that have copies of a trust are the settler, the trustee, the lawyer that drafted it, and maybe some of the beneficiaries, and, and obviously the protector if there's a protector. But the existence of the trust is not recorded anywhere. Well, this is changing. Some jurisdictions have now in, instituted trust registers that have, that have a recording of all the trusts that exist within their jurisdiction. Obviously also something you don't want. DAC 6. DAC 6 is actually EU legislation that says if you're trying to engage in certain tax planning, that your advisor, your lawyer, or your accountant, or whoever, has to report you to the government. So you can't even trust your own tax advisor in the EU because they might report you. And of course, they want to be safe, so they over-report, right? Things that may be completely legitimate might get reported because they're scared of their own shadow. 
Then you have the multilateral instrument. A multilateral instrument contains something called the principal purpose test. The principal purpose test says, if the transaction you're engaging in, if one of its principal purposes is to obtain a tax benefit, you don't get the tax benefit. And economic substance regulations. Economic substance regulations basically say that an entity's core income generating activities need to take place in the jurisdiction where it's incorporated or you can't put the revenue there and there's other punitive things that they can uh, punish you with. And so this basically requires entity to be managed and operated from within that jurisdiction. Now that's super challenging if we're talking about one of the typical planning jurisdictions like the islands because they have limited infrastructure. It's hard to get to them for board meetings. If you need to relocate staff there, a lot of times staff doesn't want to move there. A lot of times they make it difficult to actually get residency permits because they want to keep jobs for the locals. And so really the only way you can comply with the economic substance regulations is to hire local professional service providers to provide these services to you which is expensive and they're not your people, right? They're serving a whole bunch of people. They're not dedicated to, to your entity and a lot of high net worth individuals don't do, do that. So I'm gonna get into why the UAE is different in a minute, but I just wanna start by saying due to its unique attributes, it's really well positioned to benefit from all of these things that have damaged other jurisdictions. And while the UAE is a relatively new player, and in, in the trust and foundation planning world, it definitely should not be overlooked. That would be a mistake because it has a lot to offer. So first of all, the UAE has three free zones that offer, uh, some of them offer trusts and foundations, some just offer foundations, and, and, and that are ADGM, DIFC, and RAC ICC, but they all share common benefits. So the first of which is registers of beneficial owners. Free zones in the UAE do have registers of beneficial owners, but they're private. And based on my discussions with these free zones, they're dedicated to keeping them private, right? So there you have some, some privacy and some confidence that you're going to continue to have privacy. Trusts in D DIFC, for example, are private documents like they traditionally have been. They're not recorded anywhere. They don't appear in any register. They're completely private documents. So the more privacy for you. DAC 6 doesn't apply in the UAE because it's not part of the EU. And the multilateral instrument, well, listen, what does the multilateral instrument say? If one of the principal purposes is to obtain the tax benefit, you don't get the tax benefit. It can be very difficult to argue that you're moving to some island jurisdiction for anything other than a tax benefit. But the UAE is a real economy that has a lot of benefits. It's, it's a robust economy with professionals and infrastructure. It's geographically convenient. It's time zones convenient. There are a lot of business non-tax reasons to establish a, a trust or foundation or business in the UAE. And that is certainly helpful when you're battling something like a multilateral instrument. And of course, economic substance regulations are easy to comply with in the UAE. It's easy to get work permits. They have a great infrastructure. Again, it's geographically located. You have a great luxurious airline to get there on and to travel anywhere you need to go in the world. And so the UAE is probably the best position to pick up all of this slack from all these other damaged jurisdictions because it, it didn't start out as a financial center, right? I mean, it's, it, it's a robust economy. I mean, it's, it's a global economic powerhouse of a city like London or Zurich or New York. And so there's a lot of reasons to, to, to move a business or to establish a trust or foundation there. That is my presentation on why the UAE is a trust and foundation planning powerhouse. If you're thinking about setting up a trust or a foundation, don't overlook the UAE. It would be a mistake. It has a lot to offer. And I think that it is only going to get better while most other jurisdictions are only going to get worse. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information useful. See you in, in the next Esquire Group video. Peace.